Hi there, this is Mr. H. I'm here to introduce to you one of my videos in a six-step series. The reason I'm doing this series is to break down physics problems into simple, easy steps that anybody can feel that they can do and understand. This one is about energy. Enjoy. Before we get started, you want to make sure that you're okay with all of these terms. Work is the transfer of energy from an applied force over a distance. Kinetic energy is energy due to motion. Gravitational potential energy is energy stored due to an object's ability to fall. And elastic potential energy is energy stored in a spring or an elastic object that wants to return to its original shape. You might want to take a moment to take a screenshot of this image because you're going to need these strategy steps and these equations. Let's get started on our first problem. Say a child, initially at rest, sleds down a 5 meter snowy hill with negligible friction. What would be their speed when they get to the bottom of the hill? Step 1 would be to read and understand the question. They ask for the speed at the bottom of the hill, so we are done with step 1 when we can write a symbol for final velocity and the question mark. Step 2 is to draw a picture of what's happening. So draw a labeled picture showing the initial and the final moments at the beginning when they first start to slide and the bottom of the hill when they're finished. Step three is to apply the law of conservation of energy. Step three looks the same every time. It looks like energy initial equals energy final. Step four is to identify forms of energy. What kind of energy did we have at the beginning? That looks like potential energy due to gravity. What kind of energy did we have at the end? That looks like kinetic energy. Do we have any potential energy? No. So just kinetic energy final. Step five is to substitute formulas. We have a formula for potential energy, that's mgh, and we have a formula for kinetic energy, that's one half mv squared. Step six is to solve for the unknown. We were looking for final velocity, so resolve this equation for v, and we get final velocity is equal to 10 meters per second. Next example, a 0.6 kilogram soccer ball rolls with an initial speed of 10 meters per second. If it rolls for 20 meters before coming to a stop, what was the average force required to slow it down? Step 1 is to identify the question. We know that step one is finished when we have a symbol with a question mark. In this case, they asked for force, so F equals question mark. Step two is to draw a picture. In this case, we have a soccer ball that was once rolling and eventually comes to a stop. Make sure to label I for initial and F for final for the time frames at which we're looking at. Step three is to apply the law of conservation of energy. Again, step three looks like this every time. Sum of all initial energy is equal to the sum of all final energies. Step four is to identify the forms of energy that are present. In the beginning, there's motion, so we say that it has initial kinetic energy. Afterwards, there's no motion, and there's no ability to fall. There's no potential or kinetic energy, so afterwards we have zero. That means there must have been some negative external work, and that can be assumed that it happened when the ball rolls against the blades of grass. Step five is to substitute formulas. For kinetic energy, we have the expression one-half mv squared. And for work, we have the expression force times displacement times the cosine of the angle between the force and displacement. Keep in mind that in this case, the ball displaced forward while the force of friction was backwards, so cosine theta should be a negative number. Step six is to solve for the unknown, so we resolve this expression for force, and you can see that the negatives cancel out, and we get a force of 1.5 newtons. Step one is to understand the question. In this case, they're asking for how fast the marble was going. So we're done with step one when we have a symbol, final velocity equals question mark. Step two is to draw a picture. Make sure to label your picture with initial and final values. 
we're going to start up here where we had elastic potential energy and we're going to finish all the way down here just before we hit the ground when we have our final velocity. Step three is to apply the law of conservation of energy. Step three still looks the same. Sum of all energy initial equals sum of all energy final. Step four, we identify the forms of energy that we have. Let's go back to the beginning. When the ball was compressed on the spring, we had not only elastic potential energy from the compressed spring, but we also had gravitational potential energy from the height. So we have US initial, that's elastic potential energy, and we have UG initial, that's gravitational potential energy. Now at the very last moment, we can't fall any further, so we don't have any gravitational potential energy, and we're no longer being uh, attached to a spring, so we don't have elastic potential energy, but we do have a lot of motion energy, so we're going to say we have final kinetic energy. Step five, substitute formulas. For potential energy due to spring, we have one-half kx squared. For potential energy due to gravity, we have mgh. And for the final kinetic energy, we're going to have one-half mv squared. Step six is to solve for the unknown. The unknown was v, so we're going to have to get v by itself. And when we do some algebra, we get five meters per second. If you were able to recognize that the height includes not only the five meters, but also the distance x, then you could have correctly substituted 5 plus x for h, and you would have ended up getting x equals 0.65. Without that substitution, we would end up getting a smaller number for x. So hopefully we were very careful when identifying the coordinates for height. Here, give this one extra question a try. This has been Mr. H Physics, Six Steps to Solving Energy Problems. I hope you enjoyed it.